and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Allie Lowndes and I make travel, lifestyle, and motherhood content here on my channel. I would love to welcome you into our little online community here. So if you are not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as that little bell so you will get notified every time I make a new upload. Also, if you think my channel or my videos would be helpful to a friend or family member, please do share them. We would love to welcome them into this community as well. In today's video, it's going to be episode three of my home tour organization series, where we're gonna be taking you inside of how we organize and decorate our kitchen. My husband, Jeff, and I live in Los Angeles in a, I think, very comfortable, but maybe on the smaller side, two bedroom apartment. And so I hope that this inspires you if you're looking for ways to decorate, beautify, and organize your space on a budget. We'll be sharing tips and tricks and products throughout the way that we love, that our family loves, and we hope that you will love too. I'm gonna start by giving you guys a quick overview of our kitchen off the entryway here. I love how open and airy this space is. I love that we have three huge, beautiful windows in here, which let in a ton of natural light and it's so nice to just watch the street and the neighborhood and see the trees and the other houses outside just makes for a really homey feel which we are so grateful for so first off we're going to start with our cooking area of the kitchen where our oven stove and microwave are housed I'm going to take you through how we store and organize the upper cabinets as well as the lower for optimum organization and access and ease of cooking. So first up on this side, we have our toaster oven, which never thought we would get so much use out of, but we were able to buy one with some money we got for our wedding. And it has come in handy so much. So highly recommend if you're on the fence, toaster ovens are amazing. Also have a cheeky corningware up here that's usually <laughs> holding some sort of baked good. It's empty right now which is good, but I'm sure it will be full again soon. And then up above here, speaking of baking, this is where I keep all of my bakeware together. So cupcake tins, cake tins, mini cupcakes, and then I also have the these kind of larger uh, muffin tins, which are great if you want those big muffins. Uh, donut baking, as well as my uh, bread pan. And then a tip for this section, as you can see, it's kind of hard to stack some of these things, but these shelf organizers slash shelf risers are a really great tool to keep things separate. And that's just easier to get things out without everything <laughs> coming down. These are really affordable, Bed Bath & Beyond, I even, I've even seen them at the Dollar Tree. And then we also keep our mason jars here as well. And then one change we recently made that I love is all of those tiny little dip bowls, corningware bowls, little appetizer plates and um, ice cream bowls and even the smaller cereal bowls. We put all of them together on this shelf so that anytime we need something like that, we know where it is and it's all together. And then we also line everything with these uh, pantry liners, which also help uh, things stay in place. Then continuing on the baking trend, above here, again, because we don't use these items as frequently, baking mats. Another organizational tip if you have a lot of cupcake liners is to place them in a cute mason jar. We have our baking oils, baking powders, and sodas. And then I have this bin here. This is kind of the fun baking bin. I got this in the Target dollar spot so you can find these really affordable. More fun cupcake liners, but this is also where we keep our sprinkles where we keep our food coloring, um, icing sometimes, as well as cookie cutters all in one place. And then this is also where I keep a Ziploc bag. And this Ziploc bag is full of all of the assemblies, warranties, and instructions for pretty much anything we own that came with something like that. So those are also easy to access, but tucked out of the way and safe. And then over here, 
This cabinet up at the top is where I keep all of my sugars, again, mostly for baking. I have some extra oats, coconut oil spray. We use those for pancakes and a lot of different things and some biscuit mix. Normally, if I have cake mixes, scone mixes, I'll also store those up here as well. So all of the baking, baking ware is kind of all in one cohesive top level location. And then this is where we keep all of our glassware. So I have our juice glasses, our stemless wine glasses, our stemmed wine glasses, as well as our drinking jars. I will leave these linked below. These technically aren't Mason, Ball, or Kerr brand, but they are wide mouth Mason jars. They're fabulous drink glasses. I also think they look really beautiful. And they came with lids, not the two part lids, but just single lids. So these are also great to store fruits, veggies, if you're on the go for a par breakfast parfait or a smoothie or a salad. You've seen those jar salads. So these are just multi-purpose, beautiful, and they were very affordable. Now, as we transition to this part, this is obviously where our stove top is and our oven is. So we wanted to make sure that these cabinets surrounding the stove and oven would house everything we need for food prep. So if you're trying to figure out where to put things in a kitchen, keep that in mind. So as you can see up here, we have our knife set. We also have this area here, which has our frequently used cooking oils, uh, balsamic vinegar, salt, spices, and then flowing from that area, we have our spice drawer. I love this drawer. We used to keep our spices in a cabinet, but I love the drawer system so much better. So you can buy things to put inside of your drawers that will tear the spices, but we ended up being able to use an old utensil organizer and put it in sideways. So this was meant for knives and spoons and forks, but it works great for our spices. It gives them just enough tilt so we can see them and it just stores all of them beautifully. So we have our frequently used ones near the front, our less frequently used, and there's even room in the back here for some of our uh, overflow, less frequently used spices, and just some of these extra jars I have as well. And then of course, near the stove and oven, we have our pots and pans. So above our pots and pans, we actually have our cutting boards, which is really handy since our knives, knives are right here. We can just grab a cutting board. And then because this can be shallower with the cutting boards, it allowed us to have more height for our taller sauce pots and pans and um, uh, you know, stock pots, if you will. So those are housed in there. And then similarly, on this side, we have more food prep and cooking prep essentials. So in this drawer, these are our cooking utensils. So whisks, which are great to separate because they tend to get caught in things. So if you can separate your whisks in a different container or drawer organizer, highly recommend that. And then I also love at the Dollar Tree, the Betty Crocker line of utensils. Amazing quality, they last for a while, even, even when they get a little burnt and they're super affordable. So we have our spatulas here, all of our wooden spoons. So anything that's used during cooking is right there accessible. And then we also have our measuring cups and measuring spoons. And then last but not least, the remainder of our cookware. So down here, we have more of our shallow saucepans and frying pans and griddles as well as our Dutch oven. We are slowly converting to slightly less toxic forms, so with cast iron, and we eventually want to get some stainless steel as well. So we're excited to try out some new saucepans as well, or sorry, some new stir fry pans as well. So now I'm moving over to this part of the kitchen is where we have our coffee bar, which I'm so excited to have more of a coffee bar setup. We sort of consolidated some things that were kind of pushed into a corner and spread them out here. So we have Jeff's automatic pour over machine, which is another one of his pride and joys in addition to us, of course. Um, but this, this has been really great. Now I've even gotten into using it. And then here we have uh, our coffee decanter, which he just got some new beans. So we'll be putting those in there. Our electric kettle, which is also great for pour over, our grinder and our scale. 
Um, another tip I have for storing coffee is a lot of times when you go to coffee shops, you can gift people coffee in these tins. So it's one of my favorite coffee shops in New York City, Ralph's, attached to Ralph Lauren. Highly recommend. It's beautiful and amazing. But we're repurposing the tin for the coffee, which is great. And it just kind of reminds you of that place that you went to or that person that gave you the gift. And then a lot of people will set this up on trays or stands, but I realized that we were pulling things out a lot. And so that wasn't going to work for us. And so what we did instead is get just a placemat. Uh, this is a really cool kind of uh, foam rubberized placemat from Sur La Tab. It's wipeable so we can clean it off from coffee, tea stains, coffee grounds. But I think it just looks really beautiful and just kind of brings the whole look together. So uh, a wipeable mat, place mat, I also recommend for keeping all of your coffee goodies on. And then of course, above the coffee bar are all of our mugs and teas. So we have our mug shelf here. We try to keep a modest collection, but of course those things can be very easily collected over time. So we have our kind of just all of the favorite ones we've had over the years collected here. And then on this shelf is where we store our teas. So right now the teas are just in their boxes. As you can see, I just kind of keep them vertical so we know what's what and then we can just pull them out kind of the way they're already designed. Eventually I want to get some acrylic storage for these, but for now this works great. And then we also have our vanilla extract, cinnamon, pumpkin spot, pie spice, and our honey. Now some of these things can get a little bit messy or even sticky and so I just used a really small paper dessert plate to keep it on and it's just been super helpful since the bottom of the honey gets sticky, it's not getting sticky all over the cabinet. So if you're finding that some of your, maybe your uh, syrups or your sweeteners for your coffee or your honey are getting sticky, just put them on a little plate. Then we have some overflow mugs up here, our Moscow Mule mugs are up here and then this little tray holds all of our filters. And then another tip, kind of similar to the coffee, a lot of times tea and hot chocolate come in these really beautiful tins, which I love to collect. And I also love to repurpose these to store hot chocolate sachets and tea sachets. So if you don't want to get rid of your beautiful tins, just reuse them. So then below the coffee bar, we have our wonderful dishwasher, which I'm so grateful to have. And then we have these two small cabinets, which I really struggled with how best to organize. But because all of the drinks are made here, the teas, the coffees, the iced coffees, it made sense and worked perfect to store our drink accessories in this. And so as many of us have become more environmentally friendly with our straws, we have all of our metal straws and metal straw cleaners in here. We also have some koozies for our LaCroix that I keep back there. And then I've talked about these on Instagram. These are amazing. These are wide mouth mason jar lids that you can screw on to keep your drink safe, but they have the little latch for straws. So when you want to take a smoothie or something on the go, perfect. And those fit wonderfully in that tiny skinny drawer. And then down here, you would think that this would be a really skinny cabinet for like baking pans or something, but unfortunately I couldn't remove this shelf. So what I ended up doing was just putting our very small electric appliances in here. So our Nutribullet, which we love, is in here. In the back we have a French press, and then all of the blades and Nutribullet accessories are in here as well. So this is kind of where that lives. Again, close to the other kind of drink station and mason jar accessories. Now over to our sink area. I love having the massive window above the sink. Our kitchen actually has a ton of windows, which I'm super grateful for because kitchens, especially in smaller homes, can be really dark. So we take advantage of that and like to keep the blinds up, which frees up this ledge for a lot of our frequently used items like our soaps, dish soaps, and multi-purpose cleaners. Um, another tip I have for storing your scrubber sponge, we keep it in a mason jar, which we can rinse out and clean frequently. But this just keeps it out of the sink. I find that a lot of times those things that suction cup or store to the sink don't really work. And then it's keeping this all this water and moisture off of the sink top too, which can get kind of moldy and gross. So we keep that up here. And then this is Jane, our first houseplant 
blooming in the sun. We love her. And yeah, here's our sink. And then over our sink, we usually keep the cleaning rag. So the e-cloth or the, um, oh, what's that brand? The Norwex cloths that we have that we're using at a time. We'll usually use one for a few days and then put it in the pile to be washed. We have a lot of them. So we just kind of keep the one we're using in the moment right on the sink. And then under the sink is where we, and I'm sure many of you, keep and store our cleaning products. So some tips and tricks for this, instead of just having everything out in the open on the floor, is to keep everything in these plastic organizational bins. One, they're easy to take out if you're doing a lot of cleaning and are gonna be accessing your products, but it also keeps the base of this clean and it just keeps the clutter down and just keeps them nice and organized. So in here we have a ton of cleaning products ranging from Grove Collaborative to Method, um, just kind of everything we use um, pretty frequently lives down here. And then in this one, this bin is for our dish pods. So we keep um, extra dish soap sponges in here. We keep our Cascade um, dishwasher pods in here. And then this is also where we keep our box for uh, trash bags, which is really convenient. So that doesn't get lost. And then in between, because they would take up too much room in the bins. I just keep these kind of Swiffer wet and Swiffer dry cloths. And then in the very, very back is where we keep what I call the icky products. So, you know, our bug sprays, our raids, our scotch guards, the things that we rarely reach for are kind of tucked in the back there. And then a tip for cleaning cloths. If, if you haven't already converted from paper towels to cleaning cloths, I highly recommend you do. You save a ton of money. You can wash them easily in your laundry machine and I think that they just work really well. So we use one of these inside kind of over the door bins to store ours. So it's like a little basket and then it's easy to see. We can reach for the different types that we need. And when they come out of the dryer and they're all fresh, we can just stick them back in here and they're easily accessible close to where we keep them and close to the products that we use them with. On the other side of the sink is where we keep just a towel for some of the things that we frequently hand dry. So this is often full, but right now, <laughs> pretty clear. Um, and then we have our fruit basket here. We try to keep this countertop as clear as possible because again, this is where we do a lot of our food prep. So try to keep it clear. And then this is where kind of all of our service wear lives, is service wear and um, cutlery are kind of on this side of the kitchen. So again, we have these risers, this helps with the corning wear so I can separate the bases from the lids, which is really helpful. Then we just have our all white plates and bowls in there. And then to the drawers and cabinets here, I'll start with the drawers. So this is where we keep all of our serving utensils. So notice I had the cooking utensils on the other side. These are the serving utensils. So our soup spoons, our salad tongs, um, we also have a lighter in here. Um, these uh, little wooden tongs are also really great for getting things out of the toaster oven. And then we have our nice serving spoons, serving ladles, ice cream scoopers, wine openers, kind of all things service related after the food's done in here. And then this is where we keep all of our cutlery and our utensils. So. We recently got a new set of cutlery, um, which I've talked about again on Instagram. I've also shared them on my like to know it. They're beautiful, but they came with a lot of pieces. And so we knew we needed a system to kind of help organize the different sizes better than just the one, two, three, or even the smaller five sections that you usually see. So Joseph Joseph, which is an amazing kitchen brand that you can get at the container store, Amazon, really inexpensive makes these cutlery organizers. And so as you can see in here, they separate them kind of vertically tiered. So we have the small spoons and then the larger spoons here, same with the forks. And then we put all of the knives to the side as well, because those were just much larger. And then we have the pretty service wear that came with this set in this drawer. So highly recommend if you're wanting more separation or if you have a lot of um, utensils that you need to separate and organize better looking into these kind of vertical organizers. They are great. So 
Like I showed, a lot of our cookware and food prep is over by the stove. The kind of rest of it is over here by the sink. A lot of those things you're gonna wanna frequently wash right after you use them. So in here we have our measuring cups and our mixing bowls down here. And then I also have a little salad dressing maker and then these are really great. Another tip if you haven't explored um, kind of veggie keepers, I was really skeptical for a while, but this brand, which I will make sure to link everything below, is really great and we love storing our spinach and kale in here. And then in these two deeper drawers are where we keep things like Tupperware. A lot of our Tupperware is in the dishwasher right now. Um, we don't necessarily have a super well organized Tupperware situation. We've been paring down our collection a lot, but essentially we just kind of, they all fit into this area. So this is where we keep them. Also great when we wash and rinse them or take them away from the dishwasher, they can be put right away. And then this very, very bottom drawer is where we keep our dish towels and cloth napkins and oven mitts. So I keep all the dish towels in the back and then we've been slowly converting more to cloth napkins, again, just to save money, save the environment. And we use these Dollar Tree organizational bins to separate out the dish towels from the napkins so that they're not all just getting lost in one drawer. So as you can see, we don't necessarily fold them, but they are separated, which is really helpful. This little area is our island slash kind of counter bar area, which I love having. It really opens up this space and it's just really great when you're having friends over, company over to serve on. Uh, this is also kind of housing some frequently used items. Uh, I was trying to figure out a way to kind of put the things that we like to keep right here for easy access in a way that looked nice. And so we just repurposed a pretty cutting board that we already have. So. Another tip, if you're just wanting to kind of keep all those bottles or candles or in this day and age, hand sanitizer out and at the ready, but you want it to look nice, just find a nice little serving tray or cutting board in your collection and put them there. Of course, I also have my prenatals and my iron. Normally we don't have pills out, but these help me to take them every day and they feel a little bit prettier and more organized here. And then of course we have our mailbox, mailbox. Uh, this is from Home Goods. I love this thing. This is great for all of that stuff that you just usually accumulate on the countertop. So recipes, mail, we recently went through and cleaned this out, uh, stamps, cards that you need to send out, checks, pens, everything like that, that just kind of gets shoved in a basket or a pile on the kitchen counter. These organizers are really, really great for those. And then this is basically our dining room, kind of our breakfast nook. I love this space. I love that our kitchen isn't just like square or narrow, but we kind of have this little curved L flow. I love this space. Our table is a pedestal table that we actually got on offer up. And what I love about it is it has a leaf that goes in it. So even if you have a small space, but you do entertain maybe larger parties a few times a year, I highly recommend looking into smaller tables for every day, but ones where you can put the leaf expansion in so that you can have more people around the table. Again, love the windows and the natural light in here. Right now, this is sort of our <laughs> office slash devotional table. So we keep um, our reference Bibles on here, our devotionals that we use every morning, just in kind of a little table area here. Eventually, I want to get more of a cabinet for those. But for now, they're out of the way. They're not kept on the table. Another tip, if you have room in your kitchen for a little pedestal table or a cabinet to keep those things that you usually have on the dining room table, it just kind of stores them, which is really, really convenient. And then last but not least is the secret cabinet. If you want to take them over here. I'm not going to show you inside because it's kind of dark and hard to explain, but basically for all of those things like serving platters, um, multiple tier stands. Um, we have little chalk labels for parties, um, decorative placemats, holiday, um, brie bakers. All of those things are stored in this little secret cabinet here that our kitchen has. So all of those things are really pretty glass salad bowls, serving bowls. Um, we also have table linens. There's a really nice deep cabinet down here to store all of that. So if you're wondering where those things are, they're there. 
Next we have our refrigerator, which I'll give you just a little sneak peek. There's not too much to see in here organizational wise, but I do like to use those acrylic fridge organizers. I get these at TJ Maxx and Home Goods. Great for separating out fruit, great for pickles and peppers in larger jars. We kind of keep all of the breakfast items and condiments here, lunch, leftovers, and our eggs and bread, which we pretty much use every day. We keep our larger bagged lettuce in another one of these organizers so the bags aren't kind of flopping all over, or oftentimes we will use that lettuce keeper that I showed you earlier. And then all of our drinks are here. Additional veggies, meat and cheese. And then I try to keep the door somewhat organized by putting jams and salsas and syrups at the top. And then our ketchup, mustard, mayo, salad dressings, kind of the traditional things in the middle. And then all of our different soy sauces and hot sauces and Frank's Red Hot and Sriracha, um, which we use a lot, all down there at the bottom in that kind of skinnier door area. Another tip if you're looking for a family calendar but don't want to necessarily mount a big one, these magnetic ones you can get on Amazon. They're great. We've loved using these. You can really easily use the whiteboard markers, wash it off, clean it off. It's discreet. It's easy. And again, you're not mounting a big calendar on the wall. Instead, you're having it on your refrigerator. So these are great. And then above the refrigerator, I think a lot of times people don't know what to store up here. This is our least frequently used china. So this is where I keep, um, I have been blessed with two china collections, one from my mom and one from Jeff's grandmother. So all of those live up here. I also have a gravy boat and a little creamer pot. So these are really, really great. These are really inexpensive. If you have some china you're looking to store, Bed Bath & Beyond, Amazon have these. They keep the dust out, they keep them organized and safe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive tour of our kitchen and dining room area and that you found something that inspired you or encouraged you to organize and beautify your space. Again, I will have links for everything mentioned down below. You can also follow me on Like to Know It if you're interested in purchasing or shopping any of the items that I mentioned. I will also have links there for you. It's an incredible app. I will have all of that information down below. And we would love if you would support our family. Any purchases you make through that help us as well. So if you're looking for something specific or want to know where I found something, I will have links in the description box down below, as well as a link to my Like to Know It page where you can also find those products and even more products that I recommend and even more of my favorites. So leave your recommendations, tips, tricks, favorites in the comments below. We would love to read them. Also, make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.